Hi everyone, welcome to ResearchMD.com. We got a great presentation today. My name is Pramil Charya. I'm a physician and program director, internal medicine residency, transitional residency. I teach medical students and residents on a regular basis. I'm a, uh, also assistant professor of medicine, two large medical schools. So yesterday we started doing endocrinology section. You know, we talked about all these hormones and how does it affect in a nutshell. So today we're going to have a great topic. Today's topic is anti cellar syndrome. Okay, so let's start. What is empty cell, empty cell syndrome? First, the first thing we have to do, we have to define empty cell syndrome. Definition, it's an anatomical, radiological finding. Okay, we got the subarachnoid space kind of herniates into the cellular tertia, and then what happened? You got flattening of the pituitary gland. Okay, now let's look at what is cellular tertia. It's a depression in the sphenoid bone in the base of the skull, and that's where what's our pituitary gland is situated. So if you look at the pituitary gland that it sits in the cella tercia okay and then you got this herniation of the subarachnoid space pushing it down and what happens over over here flattening of the pituitary gland okay everybody got that now let's look at some epidemiology what is to say first autopsy you know they took like the 100 people and they do the autopsy and they see the finding that means most of them remain asymptomatic right and uh, radiology 12 percent they might be doing a radiology of the mri of the brain for something and then you got a finding uh, of um, empty cell arteries here right male female ratio is like five to one and the peak incidence is between 30 to 40 years okay now what are the risk factors the risk factors include obesity sleep apnea multiple multiple pregnancies and hypertension now when you look at the clinical presentation again we talked about primary you know most of them find on autopsy finding or um, maybe somebody get an MRI of the brain and then they find it so most of them remains like can be remain asymptomatic right most of the secondary will present as symptomatic which the main symptom like 85 90 percent of the people have like headache is a common and then you can have visual disturbances and then everything about like hypopituitary symptoms so the hypopituitary features like irregular menses like hirsutism sterility galactoria sexual dysfunction all of the symptoms you can have okay now just look at our pathophysiology like uh, one more time right here right we got um, incomplete formation of the cellular diaphragm this is the cellular diaphragm Okay, when you have the incomplete formation of the cellular diaphragm, subarachnoid uh, space is kind of pushed in and flattening of the uh, pituitary gland. That's the main mechanism over here. That's what's happening in the primary pretty much. Okay, now you have to know the classification. There are two types of classification, mainly primary and secondary. Okay, primary is you got again in radiological and anatomical finding. When you got about secondary, a lot of things you have to worry about, right? Something happening in the pituitary gland. It could be like a cerebral tumor is there, hydrocephalus is there, pituitary surgery, Sheehan syndrome. What is Sheehan syndrome? You got infarction of the pituitary gland, like hemorrhagic infarction of the pituitary gland, and trauma. Even like a lot of people like come in, you know, if you don't have find, uh, that's very important to get the trauma history when a patient with the neurological findings and all that okay because that can cause like empty cell empty cell syndrome also and the radiotherapy again in a pituitary gland, gland can get destroyed and then you got autoimmune diseases lymphocytic hypophysitis okay so it's good to know now let's look at our pathophysiology we already said incomplete formation of cellular diaphragm which is kind of right here. This is the, the real picture, right? And then you got the upper cellular factors like increased pulsatility of the CSF pulsatility, right? And then increased CSF pressure. They can cause the CSF leaking into the cellular tertia region and the flattening of the um, flattening of the pituitary gland. Okay. Then pituitary factors. What are the pituitary factors? What anything variation of the pituitary gland? We have an infraction. You can give it like radiation, right? And then what do they usually do when they surgery? You take the remove the pituitary gland. That can affect the pituitary factors. Now, what are the labs we should do? The laboratory findings include all this. What are the labs? Mainly, you know, we're looking at the pituitary function to make sure that's okay. You have like TSH, you got like cortisol, IGF-1, prolactin, FSH, LH, all of this testosterone, all of this pituitary hormones, you know, we need to get check it out. Now, when you look at the MRI, again, we talk about the MRI could be in the secondary mainly, it could be partial or complete, right? 
right? Because the CS depends upon the CSF volume. If the CSF volume is like less than 50% with CSF, it's around 3 to 7 millimeter. That is called a partial. And if it is greater than 50% filled with CSF, the size is going to be less than 2. That's a complete. Okay? Remember that. Now, what is the treatment? Um, Hypopituitarism, you start with the hydrocortisone, then you replace T4, and then sexual hormones, and then growth hormones. Okay? And then you also have to treat the increase in the cranial pressure because there is CSF leak and all that too, right? And how do you treat it? You can give osmotic diuretic. What is the osmotic diuretic we usually use? Acetazolamide. Acetazolamide or Diamox is the one you can give. And then weight loss is the main thing kind of also help with the, um, so, I mean, to decrease the intracranial pressure. Um, and then you can also like, you know, the last chapter is like a VP shunt and then always treat obesity also. I mean, do bariatric surgery and all of that important, okay? Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with another presentation. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.